Depending on the reconciliation method, you prepare reconciliations by reconciling differences between source system and subsystem balances, by explaining account balances, or by monitoring period-to-period -period variances in account balances. For any of the methods, you can configure rules to automatically reconcile accounts that meet specified criteria, such as zero balance accounts and accounts with no activity. Also, you can manually reconcile accounts by adding transactions and adjustments to reconciliations. I'm logged in as Carrie. You can access assigned reconciliations from the Worklist card or the Reconciliations card. The Worklist shows a list of your open reconciliations, open alerts, and pending reassignments. You can toggle the view to include your pending reconciliations and reconciliations that are under review by another user. You can use the filter bar to filter the list by attributes, such as risk rating or account type. In addition to the work list, you can access your reconciliations from the Reconciliations card. Here, you can use a saved list that sorts columns and applies filters to target high-risk accounts. In compliance with company policies, the administrator enabled bulk actions to allow users to claim multiple reconciliations at a time. I'll use the Bulk Update feature and claim the reconciliations I'll work on. This action is noted in the workflow for these accounts and in the history for these reconciliations. Click the reconciliation name to open the reconciliation. The Summary tab displays the important details for the reconciliation. The Balancing section at the top left shows details such as source system ending balance, totals for transactions and adjustments, and the unexplained difference. The bottom left shows the balance trend for up to the last 12 periods of the reconciliation. Click on the trend line to view the previous reconciliations completed for this same account ID. Click Close to return to the current reconciliation. The right-hand side of the Summary tab shows key information, such as status and due date, attachments, and comments. It looks like Frank has worked on this reconciliation and then released it back to the team because he's out of the office this week. Following up on Frank's comment, Carrie contacted Marketing and obtained a copy of their annual PO that explains the difference for this reconciliation. To reconcile this account, select the Balance Explanations tab. The tab lists transactions for this reconciliation. You can open and edit a transaction, browse the transactions by using the Previous and Next icon, or by selecting a transaction from your left-hand pane. I'll manually add a transaction to the reconciliation. If you have many transactions to add, you can also import transactions from a file or from Excel using the SmartView extension for reconciliation compliance. Using data from the marketing PO, I'll enter the transaction date, descriptions, justification, and amount. I'll select No for the amortizing accreting field. When I save the changes, I can see that there are now no unexplained differences. To support the added transaction, I'll attach the Marketing PO and select the Carry Forward option so that the attachment is carried forward to future reconciliations. Before submitting the reconciliation to the next level of workflow, I'll close the team alert that Frank raised on the reconciliation. The Summary tab shows the added attachment and zero difference. I'm ready to submit the reconciliation for review. Before I can submit, I need to answer the questions defined for the reconciliation. The submitted reconciliation is assigned to the AP Reviewers team, and it's automatically closed by a rule execution, which completes the workflow. To learn more, visit docs.oracle.com.